Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are talking about fall jerkbait fishing. A couple of weeks ago we went underwater, looked at a variety of different jerkbaits and their unique actions and I promised an in-depth jerkbait video to follow. Today is the day we're going to talk about different baits, different colors, different options and then we're going to get up and I'm actually going to show you the different retrieves. To kick this video off, I pulled out the five baits that stood out the most to me from that underwater video. If you guys haven't watched that video, if you missed it, down in the video description, we'll leave a link to it so you can go watch all the different actions of all these different baits underwater so you understand how they move and which ones do different things. But I picked my personal top five out of that video. I'm going to walk you through each bait what I like to use it for, why it's unique. We're gonna talk colors, then I'm gonna give you some quick tips on gear, and then we're actually gonna get up and work these baits. So the first bait is this guy right here. The Lucky Craft Pointer 100 is one of my all-time favorite jerk baits. It's not a finesse jerk bait. It's a little bit larger profile. Tend to throw it searching for bigger fish. Well, this year Lucky Craft came out with the H3 is a three hooked version of the pointer and something that I have always wanted. My one issue with the pointer was that it was a two hooked bait and sometimes those fish would come up and t-bone that bait in the middle and manage to not get a hook. This solved that. So the pointer for me it's an all-around jerk bait. I'm going to throw it everything I'll throw it up shallow, I'll throw it for suspended fish. The only time I don't throw it is as we get to the end of fall and that water gets really, really cold. The colder the water gets, I shy away from that big profile and the big wide motions that this bait tends to make. But from a fish catching standpoint, it's a dynamite bait. It's a mid-depth bait, so it doesn't have a tiny bill, it doesn't have a big deep diving bill. It'll get down, I mean, it's hard to put a number on it because we all use different line sizes, different rods and everything else, but when I'm fishing it, it seems to run somewhere in that three to six foot category is about where I'm getting with that bait. Not a whole lot deeper than that, but a dynamite choice. The second one, also from Lucky Craft, this is the flash pointer. And it comes in a few different sizes. Down in the video description, I'm gonna link the baits, the sizes that we prefer, color selection, hook sizes, all that stuff for you to make this really easy. But the Lucky Craft Flash Pointer SP, this bait, I smash them on this bait. There's no way around it. We absolutely light the fish up with this thing. If you look at the bait, if you look at its actual profile, you see how skinny it is in the belly compared to how fat it is in the back. So it's a wider bait on top. What that does is it creates, like the name says, the flash pointer, a ton of flash. As this bait is making its moves while you're ripping that rod, it's rolling and giving a lot of flash and vibration. And that flash goes a long way for calling fish in. The third bait I'm going to talk to or talk to you about very similar profile and does something very similar. This guy right here fishes very shallow, especially in the smaller size. I mean, you're talking one, two, three feet of water. The larger size, you might get down four foot, but you're not going deep with these baits. It's a shallow water bait, tons of flash, tons of movement, and pulls fish extremely well. It's also a consistent bait. So while I'm working that rod, and that bait's out there at the end of a long cast, I know exactly what it's doing. There's no mystery. I'm not trying to figure out what's happening because it feels strange. It's a very, very consistent bait. Number three, the Jackal Rerange. Again, much wider in the back than it is in the belly, and it creates a very similar action. A ton of rock and a ton of flash. Nothing flashes that I've ever thrown. Nothing flashes more than this jerk bait. It's got, it outshines all the other baits in terms of throwing light around in the water while you're working that rod. 
and it shows in the fish catches. We smash with this bait. It's got a little bit bigger bill, so I can fish this bait anywhere from probably two to seven feet of water. What I really like about it is this weight transfer system. It's magnetized, so it's stuck up there in the front until you go to whip that cast. When you go to whip and fire that bait, that weight will slam to the back and you get a dynamite cast out of it. No tumbling in the air, which is really frustrating with a lot of traditional jerk baits. So great cast distance, great depth, incredible flash, and then of course, three hooks, which is critical. Two more, and then that's it for the specific baits, and we'll get into the details, the stuff that's really going to matter for you. Mega Bass Vision 110. And what can't be said about the 110? Hands down, the industry leader in jerk baits in the last few years. Not an inexpensive bait. You're going to pay for that success, for that precision, but it is a dynamite bait. The 110 has a very consistent action. It's fairly shallow again, but it's got a beautiful action underwater. It sits nose down, it's extremely consistent, and the results from coast to coast, every species of bass speak for themselves. This particular bait, the 110, is so precise. You have to be very, very careful when changing out hooks. We're going to get to that, but this is a balanced and tuned bait. You don't want to mess with them too much, but when you fish them straight out of the package, they are a fish catcher. And then last, and I've got this one tied on right now, for the next part of this video. But that right there, again, the Vision 110, but this is the plus one. You see that larger bill? Completely different angle on that bill. This one dips way down, this one comes straight out with the nose of that bait. Much larger bill. It's a deeper diving bait. This, in that video, blew Tim and I's mind. It was extremely hard to even film this bait because it had such an amazing side to side dart it moved so far that it was hard to get it on the camera we had to work really hard to even get footage of it because it would go off both sides of the lens really really tough but from a fish stand fish catching standpoint amazing really really good option for fishing that deeper water column Again, for me, six to 10 feet, maybe even deeper than that on a really long cast is the effective range that I'm fishing with that bait. It's a really, really good option as the water cools down. Remember I said as water was cooling, that pointer sort of went away. So early in the fall, this is an amazing option, as is that Jackal Re range, as is that flash pointer. As that water starts cooling down, as you go through fall, and I'm not gonna give you exact water temperatures to drop the baits off, because it changes from place to place, but you'll just notice your success rate changing. That pointer, that's the first one to go as that water cools down. Then the re-range, then the flash pointer. Then you're throwing that 110, that really consistent, really finesse action. And then as that water really gets cool and the fish are hugging bottom and they don't wanna come up, they're not willing to rise, a bait that will head down there and get to them. That 110 plus one or a Stacy 90, one of those deeper diving baits becomes critical. These baits suspend and that's why you don't wanna to mess too much with hardware because they sit perfectly in the water column. And the key with these fish is pausing that bait right in front of them. You don't want it to sink you don't want it to rise, and you certainly don't want it moving forward. We'll come back to that. But a bait that will get down there, get right above those fish sitting on bottom, and then just hang there. They turn, they come up, and on the next dart, they eat. We've seen it over and over and over. Now, a couple more quick tips for you before we get into the actual how to work the jerk bait. One is going to be hooks. I just told you to be careful changing hooks. When I say be careful, I mean really careful. Tim and I have one hook that we put on jerk baits, just one. This is a Gamakatsu hook. This is the Finesse Nano Treble. 
And again, we'll link it so you don't get confused and get the wrong hook. But this little hook right here doesn't mess up the balance of these baits. It's light enough wire that it won't change anything. You can put it on any of these jerk baits. The sizes that you're going to use are four, five, and six, depending on the jerk baits that we're talking about. Those three sizes in that one hook are all you need. It won't impact the actions, but what it is, is a deadly sharp hook. It's so sticky sharp, it's crazy. And we've seen over and over from underwater footage that when these fish come up and eat these jerk baits, if those hooks aren't sticky sharp, they eat it and spit it back out. They can do it so fast that you literally can't react. We timed it. We had a fish, what was that, three or four years ago, Tim and I had a big fish. It was a six pounder because we ultimately caught it. We were fishing, shooting underwater footage, six different times this fish came in and ate a jerk bait and blew it out and I could never get a hook in it. I finally caught that fish, but when we got home, we sped that footage up and watched how quickly that fish was eating and spitting that bait out. Now it's been a few years, so I might have this number wrong, but I believe it was 0.17 seconds from the time it sucked it in to the time it was no longer in its mouth. It was faster than I could physically react. So if you don't have a sharp hook, it has nothing to do with whether or not you reacted. You can't react as fast as they can eat it and get rid of it. You are completely reliant on a sharp hook to catch and to keep that fish holding and then you realize that they're there and you get a hook set on them. More than any other technique, a, an ultra sharp hook is critical to jerkbait fishing. Last tip for you here, and then we're gonna stand up, change camera angles. You see this line? This came off of one of my jerkbait reels. This is old fluorocarbon. This line was almost a year old. The reason why I bring this up is when we were shooting our last underwater jerkbait video, you may have noticed, you may not have. Let me show you a quick clip where you're working this jerkbait and it would stop. And with a jerkbait, everything revolves around perfect stops and starts. It has to be snap movements. If it's not snap movement, the fish have no interest in the bait. Well, we realized that these baits would stop and then drift across the screen. Everything was right, the equipment was right. We're using a perfect rod. We were using excellent line, but the line had memory. It had been on the spool too long and it would stretch out. And then when I would go slack, the line would want to coil back up and it would pull that jerk bait forward, completely ruining the action. We could have spent a day on the lake catching no fish for no reason other than the line that was on the spool had been on there too long. So make sure that you're fishing fresh line when you fish a jerk bait. All right, guys, we are going to change camera angles. I'm going to actually show you how we work these baits. I'll show you the rod, what's important about that rod, and the different retrieves that we use to catch these jerk bait fish this time of year. Now, finding the right rod to work a jerk bait is critical. It requires a little bit different action than virtually anything else that you do. It's important that the rod tip is stiff enough to give that bait a really crisp action, but you still have to have a limber enough rod overall to absorb the fight with a big fish on a light wire hook. It's a really hard balance to find. Down in the video description, we'll link you three or four of our favorite jerkbait rods at different budgets, but rods that will truly work at every price point to throw a jerkbait effectively. If you try and throw a jerkbait on a crankbait rod, you're missing out on a lot of bites because that rod loading and unloading destroys that crisp stop and start action that is so important to the jerkbait. So let's talk about the actual retrieves. I use either one, two, or three snaps of the rod and reel. 
and I just intermix them. On a given day, you may need to let the bait sit longer than other days. This bait gets down so deep, I'm buried in the bottom right now. Clean it up. But you need to vary the timing. So one day you might be doing a snap, 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 let it sit for a second or two, snap again, let it sit, snap, 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 let it sit, snap. Either one, two, or three, all mixed together. Just break it up so it's not consistent. But the timing matters. So as the water gets cooler, I'm gonna let that bait hover, let it suspend longer. So right now I might work it, work it again, work it again, but a couple months from now, I might give it a twitch and just wait and wait and wait. And I'm just going to let this bait sit here. It's just suspended. And I'm waiting for a bass to rise up and look at it. The colder the water gets, the longer it takes for that bass to be willing to make the move. That bait's been sitting a while. I'm gonna give it one little twitch. I'm going to let it sit again. So that cadence, how quickly you're working that bait will slow down with water temperature. Give it a couple snaps, let it sit. On the flip side, when that water's really warm, rip, 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 pause, rip, pause, rip, rip, pause, rip, rip, rip. Just intermix them, break it up. Now the actual action is a sharp snap of the rod tip, a quick snap. And at the same time, I'm doing a half or three quarter handle turn to help absorb that slack line. So I'm not left with a bunch of extra slack. So I throw it out and watch, I work them together, the handle and the rod. Snap, 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 snap. They work together and then notice I lay my slack back out on the water. You don't want so much slack that you can't feel a bite, but some slack is critical. You want that bait, when you throw it out there and you pull it down, you want that bait to hover perfectly. No forward movement. We've watched over and over again in the underwater footage. You'll snap that bait and it'll be hovering and a bass will be looking at it. And a guy who doesn't know what he's doing will reel up the slack before he pulls again. Well, when you did that reel up, that bait swam forward and that bass will just turn off. They're done no interest. If you've got it sitting there and you reel up some of the slack, but I still leave slack out on the water and then I snap through the slack and hit the bait. Then it goes from sitting to a sharp movement to sitting, sharp movement. It's crisp. It's clean. That is critical with that jerk bait. The other thing that's going to matter is how hard you hit the bait. Rule of thumb, a deep diving bait. Let me clean this bait up, it's down on bottom again. Rule of thumb, the longer the bill, so the deeper the diver, the softer you hit the bait. If you take a bait like a 110 plus one or plus two or a Stacy 90, and you're really ripping that rod, you're killing the action of those baits. So this bait, now I'm, now I'm really fishing the plus one. Smaller movements, like this. Let it sit. Snap. Let it sit. It's not that really aggressive hit. Now conversely, I'm gonna retie really quickly and I'll show you how to work something like a flash pointer or a jackal re-range and how much harder you can hit that bait to get all that flash and vibration out of it to pull those fish up to the bait. Let's take a look at that. All right, we've switched over to the Lucky Craft Flash Pointer. Now this is a bait just like that re-range. These baits have a smaller bill and they're designed to be unstable. They're designed to want to roll to give you all that flash and movement. This is a bait that you can hit really hard to try and draw fish. I focus on these baits when the fish are up really shallow and they're actively on bait fish. They're either sitting up against hard structure and they're hunting bait fish 
or maybe you actually see them busting on a bait ball, this is a great option. It's also a really good option in the springtime to pull those fish. But this one, you can really hit it hard to get the maximum vibration out of that thing. Throw light as far as you can throw it, really draw those fish in. Don't be afraid to snap that rod really hard. Completely different than a deep diver. The rest of your baits, they're going to land somewhere in the middle between these two, more of just a standard jerk bait retrieve. Try not to blow the tip of my rod off right there on the side of my boat as I hit it, but just a standard jerk bait retrieve like this. But that flash pointer, you can really hit it. Some different retrieves for some different baits make all the difference. Now you can go out and you can make mistakes. You will still catch fish, but the power of a jerk bait is in its ability to trigger strikes. And even more than that, to trigger giant strikes. Got a little grass on there. We've got some dying grass up here on this point. These baits trigger bites. We've talked about that before, getting a triggering reaction rather than fooling a bass into biting. The harder you snap that thing, the more aggressive the response is going to be. The only other thing I really want to talk to you about, the line that I'm throwing, 12 pound fluorocarbon. I used to throw a jerk bait a lot on braid to a leader. I still do it on occasion. You need to hit your bait just a little bit softer to make up for the braid, but it will absolutely work. But day in and day out, 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon seems to be the perfect balance for a jerk bait. It gives you the distance, the responsiveness, and then when you've got a fish on, that extra little bit of stretch to help absorb the fight and save your hooks. And then color selection is the last thing. I keep color very simple. Basically, same concept as crankbaits, three styles. You've got ghost colors, you know, ghost minnow, something see-through. Then you've got flashy colors, American Shad, anything that just throws light. And then you've got your bold colors. Bold includes white, but is not limited to white. So like Elegy Bone and Mega Bass, or what else could that be? Chartreuse Shad and Lucky Craft. Or it could be a clown color, a bright chartreuse color. But you want something ghost, something flashy, and something bold and you've met every circumstance. Guys, fall is jerkbait season. Winter is jerkbait season. You can catch these fish in cold, cold water by slowing down, still snap that bait, still hit it hard, but let it sit and sit and sit and hover over those fish, and it will catch them in the middle of winter. This is a technique that will just continue to work for you throughout the fall and winter. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.